All right, guys, what's going on? Levi Trumbull reporting alongside Route 144 over here in Frederick, Maryland by the Roy Rogers. We are now standing uh, at a crime scene, a crime scene. As you guys know, at this point, Sam Rosenblum, a Jewish pro-Israel demonstrator, was just attacked today. We are here on the scene of the crime, crime here with Sean Porter. He's going to walk us through the details. He was actually present when Mr. Rosenblum was attacked. He actually caught some video footage of it. He is an eyewitness to the assault and to the ambush, and he is going to tell us what it is he witnessed standing right along, uh, right where we are here now, 144, uh, right outside the Roy Rogers in Frederick, Maryland. So we're going to flip this camera around, and we are going to interview him about what he, what he has witnessed earlier in this day, that being March 13th. Are you ready, Sean? All right, let's do this. All right, so Sean, you were out here earlier today. Was it just you and Sam Rosenblum, or was there somebody else as well? Well, there was no one but me and Sam until this crazy guy uh, walked up to us. And at first he was smiling and he was recording uh, Sam and his signs and he was asking questions. So I started recording and I was holding a sign like down with my left hand and I was recording with my right hand. And um, he was talking to Sam and then he started getting real rude with Sam. Uh, saying negative stuff about Jewish people and Israel and they were arguing but still kind of like conversing and discussing yeah and then all of a sudden this guy like started grabbing a hold like a hold of Sam and then got behind Sam and Sam turned around and this guy I believe it was a right hook right to the side of his head and Sam just went straight like rigor mortis and like fell down as the guy started he started taking off this way and he like grabbed my phone and threw it on the ground and then he like ran to, towards my phone i started pursuing in my high pursuit flip flops but this guy <laughs> this guy beat me there he grabbed the phone and he threw it over the roy rogers over into that parking lot where it slammed and he took off that way and i continued following him and we actually like squeezed like side by side by the Roy Rogers sign over there. And he got to the phone and he slammed it again in front of Roy Rogers drive through like right there. And then took off that direction. And out of nowhere, out of the blue, I hear like, stop, Sheriff's Department. And believe it or not, it was Lieutenant Chad Atkins, who's actually been featured on our channel numerous times. He was like off duty, plain clothes. He was holding his badge. He was running that direction. It was it was like something out of a movie. So here we can see, it looks like Frederick City. Is this who you dealt with earlier? Frederick City Police? Yeah, Frederick City Police and the Frederick County Sheriff's Office. You got Lieutenant one right behind Chad you Atkins. Too. Yeah, right behind you too. I mean, it's a busy day down here. I guess there's a lot of um, poor Jewish people being attacked by jihadi terrorists. But anyway, so we were running across this parking lot that direction over in front of Bellis's. I'm running with my flip-flops. Poor Lieutenant Chad Atkins, you know, he's in his cowboy boots and his jeans and his flannel jacket. You know, cowboy's got a cowboy, you know. So he's in his cowboy boots and he's trying his best to catch this guy who's running that direction. The guy, he looked to be like late 20s, early 30s. And myself and Lieutenant Atkins are both, I think we're both 45. Uh, he might be 46, I don't know. Um, and he took off through that hole in the fence over there and went up through this field and he went back in this industrial park back there and then got lost in the industrial park. And apparently, like all these cops swarmed the whole area. There was like 20 cops or something. It was ridiculous. I'd never seen so many Frederick City Police in my life. They had canines, dogs looking for this guy. And apparently they figured out. A lot of action. Apparently they figured out he escaped over the roof of that building right there. You see that round building? There's like a round uh, air. A Quonset hut hangar type thing. 
he escaped somewhere over that roof that direction and he gave the cops a slip they they didn't get him however uh we may or may not know the vehicle that the guy was in a black toyota tundra may or not, may not be his we gave the tag number to the police um they have all sorts of security footage i don't know if you know this or not but because the red light cameras they actually roll camera footage 24 hours a day so that they can match the still photo of your tag to an actual video of you running the red light there's another one So anyway, they were unable to get them after a large manhunt with dogs and all these cops scouring buildings. They were looking at dumpsters, they were looking under stuff, they were looking under people's porches. It was completely crazy. And um, the last I heard, uh, the police visited Sam in the hospital. I'm just coming from the hospital. And Sam, um, he got a CT scan on his head to find out what the hell is wrong with him. I mean, to, to find out about, you know, how bad the concussion was from being knocked unconscious. Um, there was a nice lady that was helping him uh, after the attack. It was a uh, officer, her, her, swear to God, her name is Officer Cop, C-O-P-P, -P, Frederick City Police. So she was helping. <laughs> and long story short, um, we got it on footage, on video. The phone is right now at one of them stores where they, they, they pull the footage off of your phone, even though your phone has been smashed by a jihadi terror. So I went in and I said, look, uh, there was a jihadi terror attack in Frederick. My friend Sam got attacked and so did my phone. And uh, he, he knew what to do. He's there doing it now. He's getting it. He's putting it all on a thumb drive. I'm taking it to the police. So they have full video and clear, uh, facial images so that they can use their facial recognition to track them down with his MVA uh, license or whatever database they're going to use, but they're going to find them. So here's what I want to ask you. Can you show me approximately, and I want to show everyone sort of where we are here in Frederick. Can you show me approximately where you guys were standing when this incident transpired? Right here was Sam. I was uh, right about over there. Uh-huh. The guy was right here, and he came around Sam and like got behind him, at least as far as I can remember. And then there was like a little bit of a tussle, and then he did the right hook on Sam's head. And it happened so quickly that my recollection may not be state of the art, so the video is going to have to tell the tale. Other than the fact that I know Sam did nothing wrong and this guy was talking all sorts of negative stuff about Israel and about Jews, so that makes this a hate crime. And then on top of that, they found a weapon. Apparently, you want, want me to show you where it was located? Yeah, they found what kind of weapon? It was a handmade piece of square stock steel, uh, like inch and a half or two inch square stock steel painted black with with uh, uh, those gold color anodized bolts. Uh -huh. Like like this like through there with nuts on it so it was like a spiky uh bar thing and then the, there was electrical tape on the hand grip and it was right here so when he was walking up the guy had like stashed his weapon here and then he came up and we noticed him and started talking to him and that's when the uh the first degree assault took place from this jihadi terrorist son of a bitch now explain the police response you said that there was something Great. about yeah there was something about there was a plainclothes police officer around here when this incident transpired. Lieutenant Chad Atkins was sitting in that intersection there in his pickup truck. Mm -hmm. And he pulled over here and he apparently jumped out to assist me in the foot pursuit of the jihadi terrorist. I guess he was able to tell that I wasn't going to be able to catch him. I don't know if it was the flip-flops or the, um, the robust physique. That would have led him to believe that I wouldn't have been able to catch the guy. But long story short, Chad Atkins took over and, and handled it. Obviously, it's not my job to tackle people. Ha have they got the guy yet? Is the guy in custody? No, like I said, he escaped on a roof. Wow. And gave him the slip. Oh, right over there. That roof over there by a Quonset Hut building? Yeah. He, he got up on one of those roofs. The dogs tracked him and everything. They had dogs, cars. It was crazy. Wow. That is crazy. So... 
Sam got punched in the face, right? That's what you saw? Hard as hell. And was there, was it just one punch? Was one it, punch. And, and what else? And then Sam started to fall, and then dude took off. But not before grabbing my phone and throwing it on the ground. And, you know, right about... Right about here? Yep. And then we both converged on the phone, and he beat me to it. He grabbed it, and he threw it over that way by the Roy Rogers drive through Yeah. And it smashed on the ground. And then he took off that direction, and I took off that direction. And um, I was yelling like, you know, I'm going to call 911, like, get out of here. I was trying to keep him from destroying right. the phone more. He goes to the phone, he's bikes it on the ground and takes off that way right. so he was trying to destroy the evidence because you were filming him right at that yeah. he saw that yeah so he's trying to destroy the evidence which it doesn't work that way it's in hard memory yes <laughs> and then on, on, on top of that he's trying to prevent me from dialing 911 yes right so he's yeah. trying to get out of trouble yes so here's my question so after this whole situation police are on scene at this point what is sam doing he gets rocked in his face sam did he is, did he get sam the, was out he was out cold like on the a ground a minute or more yeah and Wow. A bunch of people were rendering aid along with that officer cop. Was was medical here? Medical was uh, not here first. The okay. cops were medical came Second, afterwards. But they were here is what I'm saying. They ultimately came. Ultimately they came. Ultimately they cops came. Cops were here. Did he Credit go? City police were on it. And he did he leave in medical? Uh, he left in an ambulance, yeah. Wow. He and didn't they, know what had happened. He didn't remember the guy. Uh -huh. He didn't remember getting hit. He remembered nothing. I talked to him at the hospital and I was talking to him. I had a conversation with him. Mm -hmm. I left. I got his phone. I got the Uber app on his phone. I came back to his hospital room, and he totally forgot the conversation we had just had five minutes earlier. Right. So when you spoke with him, what is his position right now? How is he doing? He thinks his shoulder's broken. I think it's just hurt. Uh -huh. um, and then he had a concussion. You know, he was knocked unconscious. He had a CAT scan. Hopefully, he's okay. When do you think we see a, an arrest and a charge in this case? Uh shortly after the video footage is um, is given to the police. I think they'll get them pretty quickly. Yeah. So you took video of it, and right now, since your phone is broken, you're just waiting to have that video footage transported from one form of memory onto another form of memory. Yeah, that's all it is. Okay. My phone was still working. I was getting phone calls in the car on Bluetooth, and is I was your, like, take is, calls. Is your phone shot right now? It's done for? Yeah, it's it's a S23, but um, I have two S23s. I have a backup in case someone destroys my phone during a, a protest, which happened. So yeah. I have an identical backup, so I'm just using that one now. All right, well, good deal. Well, guys, with that being said, hold a minute. Pause. All right, and with that being said, again, we are standing at the scene of a crime, a very unfortunate set of circumstances to Sam Rosenblum, a First Amendment activists out here today protesting freedom of speech, uh, showing love for Israel. He is Jewish, and uh, he would love to talk to anyone about that if you talk to him reasonably enough. Uh, but just a very unfortunate thing. We are sending him our thoughts and prayers as he recovers right now in the hospital, Frederick Health Hospital here in Frederick. And uh, that is a story when we have more information about it. If there is an arrest, if there are charges filed in the near future, we will bring that information to you once we have it. But with that, Levi Trumbull reporting along with today's witness of the unfortunate events, Sean Porter, and we'll catch you guys soon.